Hello, this is Carmen with the Singer Featherweight Shop and April1930s.com. Today I want to talk to you about motor and gear lubricant for the Singer Featherweight. There is much discussion about what is the right type of lubricant to use, specifically in the featherweight motor, and the overall purpose of the lubricant as well. So I would like to clear up some of that information and also show you where, how, and when to use the lubricant, as well as tell you about some exciting news and developments here at the Singer Featherweight Shop. Original Singer lubricant from the era of the featherweight is a basic non-flowing, low melting point grease. Non-flowing meaning that it will generally stay where it is put, and low melting point meaning under low heat, the lubricant will gradually melt and be reduced to its basic lubricating properties. This is a cutaway view of the featherweight motor that was given to me by Dave McCallum, and it offers an excellent view of where the lubricant goes inside the motor. The featherweight motor has two lubricating ports, one on the top by the belt and one on the back of the motor. Inside each port is a felt wick as well as some space to hold the lubricant. When the motor is in use there is a small amount of heat that is generated, partially from the friction between the shaft and the bushing, and this heat causes the low melting point lubricant to liquefy, thus wicking through the felt and onto the shaft of the motor. If the melting point is too high, however, the lubricant will either not melt at all or not flow through the wick unless the motor gets very, very hot. This is not a good thing. We have spent the last year researching, testing, and having laboratory tests done on the original Singer lubricants in order to supply featherweight owners with a lubricant that would meet the unique needs of the featherweight. But first, let me explain the importance of the proper melting point. Here is a view of one of the simple heat and melting point tests using a few of the sewing machine lubricants found today. We simulated the felt wick by placing several lubricants on a thick felt mat, testing to see how fast they melted and wicked through the felt. The lubricant at number one is the original Singer Motor lubricant from the United Kingdom. Lubricant number two is our newly developed lubricant from the Singer Featherweight Shop. Lubricant number three is original Singer Motor lubricant from the U.S. After many tests on featherweight motors, we discovered that the best lubricant is one with a lower melting point which accommodates the wool felted wicks inside the motor, but not so low that the lubricant melted too fast. A proper melting point balance was necessary. U.S. lubricant was obviously a good motor lubricant according to original Singer standards, but we believe that the later UK formula to be better because of its lower melting point. Excess heat is what destroys electric motors, and the cooler that you can keep a motor, the better its overall health, life, and longevity. Thus, as you can see from this time-lapse video, the melting point of our new lubricant is within the range of the original Singer lubricant from the UK. You will notice that the melting point of ours is far less than the US vintage and modern Singer lubricant, as well as other popular machine lubricants currently on the market. Most of the others did eventually melt once the temperature was turned up significantly. But as you can see, the Triflow lubricant at number seven did not melt at all. That is because Triflow lubricant does not have a melting point. It will burn before it melts. Although Triflow is superior in its lubricating properties for places like gears, it is not properly formulated to use in the lube ports of the motor. As you can see from this RPM demonstration on this machine that hadn't had its motor lubricated in quite some time, the RPMs of the motor turning the hand wheel reached a high of 1246 rotations per minute prior to being lubricated. After the old hardened grease was cleaned out of the ports and our new lubricant was added, the ports were heated with a hair dryer to get the lubricant flowing through the old dry wicks. There was a significant increase in the RPMs, up to 1652. So what does this mean if you have purchased other lubricants? Good question. If you have used other lubricants in your motor, then refer back to the time lapse portion of this video. The white Singer lubricant was next in line to melt but it did take several more minutes and an increase in temperature to accomplish this. This was the next best thing available for the last several years, aside from finding original Singer lubricant tubes, of course. But now that a more exact product is here, we will no longer be carrying those tubes. Keep in mind that there is no cure for a machine motor that is worn out from lack of maintenance, but we might as well do all we can to keep these machines running strong into the future. 
Our new sewing machine motor and gear lubricant is now available for sale on our website. It comes in a curved tip syringe that works excellent for lube placement as well as being economical and that there is minimal waste. This application idea is not something I came up with on my own, but what I found to be the best method from Ray White's advanced school on sewing machine repair. Thanks for all your help, Ray. Each motor lubricant comes with an instruction sheet. Page 1 shows how to apply it to the gears, and page 2 shows how to clean the motor ports and then how to refill them. If your machine has old grease on the gears, they should be cleaned first using kerosene with a gear and link cleaning brush, or an old toothbrush works too. We put kerosene in the same style bottles as our sewing machine oil so that you can direct the kerosene precisely on the point that is to be cleaned. You may order these long spouted empty bottles on our website as well. Both the top and bottom gear should be cleaned at the same time. Therefore it would be necessary to remove the spool pin cover plate and the drip pan. I recommend placing the machine on a piece of cardboard to catch and absorb the drips from the kerosene and dirty residue that flows while cleaning. Once the gears are clean, the new lubricant can be added by putting a bead of lubricant on the gears and then slowly turning the hand wheel. This will distribute the lubricant to the corresponding gear. We do not recommend using fibrous paper cloths or cotton swabs to clean the excess away because it will introduce lint and foreign fibers into the gears. Instead, after turning the hand wheel a couple of times manually, use your finger to wipe off any excess lubricant. Although the excess lube will not hurt anything, it leaves a mess inside your machine. To lubricate the motor, it may be necessary to first remove old lubricant that is clogging the ports. Gently insert the hollow port cleaning tool, which is included. This will dislodge any old lubricant, making room for new lubricant. Remove the cap from the lubricant and insert the tip of the applicator into each of the motor ports. You can see from our cutaway motor that the area to house the new lubricant is not large and a little lubricant goes a long way. Depress the plunger gently and fill up the port, simultaneously pulling the applicator out as you fill it. Use your finger to wipe away any excess, and then repeat this process for the other motor port. Singer originally recommended lubricating the motor about every six months, and the gears occasionally as needed. This is the Singer Featherweight Shop's recommendation as well. When you are finished lubricating the gears and or motor, it may be necessary to pull slightly back on the plunger so that the lubricant is no longer under pressure. Then you can replace the cap to the tip and store it without leaking. Although this lubricant was developed for us specifically for the featherweight, it can be used on the gears of any sewing machine with all metal gears, but should not be used on plastic or nylon gear systems. If you own a quilt store or a featherweight business and are interested in carrying this product, please feel free to contact us directly for wholesale inquiries. As always, we look forward to keeping these featherweight machines working long into the future and are here to help and offer featherweight service and technical support anytime. Feel free to give us a call.